What's up guys? How's it going? It's Matt here. So we're going to talk about 1911s today. We're going to do a little bit of talk about 1911s. There's a lot of 1911 haters out there and uh, they don't like it because they don't understand the system. They don't quite know how to use the system properly. They don't even know how to grip the system pop properly. And because of it, they just say it's a shitty system and you should never use it because it's going to fail. It's all these issues, blah, 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 blah. And 1911 suck is what they'll say. Well, the truth is they just don't understand how to actually use the system and they never actually took some time to actually research it and find it out for themselves or learn from someone that knows how to use the 1911. So I'm going to cover that right here in today's video. How to properly use a 1911. Now, the 1911 I'll be using in this video is my Rock Island Armory 1911A1. As you guys see, it has been 100% cleared. There's no issues with it. Now, there's a couple big issues that people have with it. Is one, you know, it's always the, the polymer guys. The polymer guys will always say the same thing. We don't like 1911s because 1911s just fail all the time. They don't work all the time. Blah, 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 blah. And there's manual safeties on it. And uh, there's all these different complaints that they have. But the biggest complaints they always start with is the manual safety issue. Now, yes, there are several safeties on a 1911. And this is how it's designed to be carried. Right here, locked and cocked. This is clear. But this is designed to be carried 100% locked and cocked. People, this scares people. All right, this absolutely scares people. They think this is magically just going to fall down on a live round, which cannot happen. This, even if I put the safety down and I'm carrying it, it cannot go off. There's been stories of police officers that were carrying 1911s. They were wrestling someone on a three-level story uh, parking lot, trying to get a hold of their gun. Their gun fell off of them. They couldn't get a hold of it. It fell off the building three stories down and the hammer broke off before it actually went down on the actual the, on the, the primer itself. Basically guys, a 1911 is safer than most striker fired guns. You get to XD, that's pretty safe. When you get to other like Glocks and M&Ps and 320s and stuff like that, this is inherently safer carrying it just like this locked and cocked. This cannot go down. The trigger has to be set the trigger has to be pulled in order to create the mechanical devices the mechanical devices that allows it to go down in order to pull the trigger you have to have this completely depressed which means you have to have the good solid grip on it so when you're carrying this locked and cocked just like that the way how it's going to be this cannot go down even if the safety came off which I've, it's come off before it doesn't bother me it doesn't bother me whatsoever do i usually put it on yeah i usually put the safety back on but it doesn't bother me it really doesn't because even right here I'm pulling it as hard as I can, it is not going to go off. So that's the very first thing. That scares them. Now, like, don't get me wrong, 1911s are not for everyone. This may be way too scary for you. But my my suggestion on that is if you're that scared of gun, you should probably try to avoid them and probably not own any personally. So just throwing that out there. The other reason people don't like 1911s, modern day gun owners don't like 1911s, at least people that don't know anything about 1911s, the reason they don't like them is because they always say this thing. When you're in a competition like this, when you're shooting it, you know, you gotta put the safety down and the mechanical safety and you're accidentally gonna knock it up and it's gonna take the, the gun out of battery. That is another false, guys. You're not holding the damn gun right. Um, just because there's a groove here doesn't mean that's where your thumb goes. That groove is just specifically there so you can reach the magazine release. That's all that's there. The way you hold a 1911, believe it or not, is like this. Right here, you ride your thumb on the safety. It's not complicated. When you pull it in and out of the holster, your thumb is on the safety. It's in the holster, out of the holster, like this. And your thumb is always on the safety. When you shoot it, you put it down, and your thumb stays on the safety. It's designed to be have your thumb riding on the safety the entire time, so it cannot pop up. So if you hold the pistol the right way, this will be depressed properly, and the safety will not be accidentally turned on. It's pretty simple, guys. You don't hold it like 1911 like this, you hold it like this, okay? That's how you hold a 1911. Now, a lot of people that don't like the 1911, they actually don't know how to draw the 1911 itself. So I'm gonna show you how to properly draw and put a 1911 on target. So the draw is the same as any other draw that you're supposed to be doing, whether you're wherever you're carrying it. There's a one slight difference to it. So you're looking at target, this is pointing in a safe direction, the pistol has been cleared prior to the video, guys. You pull the pistol up right here, and then you put your support hand on it. And once your support hand gets on it, see my thumb? Boom! Safety off. Right on target. And then when you're putting it in the holster, same motion, up, down. 
it's not a complicated process and you get so used to it like every time i pick it up i always put it <laughs> i put it down all the time you know it's, it's almost like it, i don't even think about it it's muscle memory right now like what i'll do is at night is i'll be dry i'll completely unload it and i'll just point it in a safe direction just that's how i do it every single time every single time i do that another big reason people don't like the 19, 1911s is capacity capacity we don't like capacity there's only seven or eight rounds that's all you're allowed to have with a 1911 well it's kind of funny because there's this trend that you can see all over the country so when there's magazine laws that come to play like you know high capacity magazine standard capacity magazine laws that come into play it's amazing how people start switching from you know the nine millimeters back to the 1911s and the 45s and the bigger bores because if they can't hit the target a lot, they want to hit it less with bigger bullets. And then when the laws go down, they want more bullets and they'll be able to hit it more. Uh, Clint Smith, he did a live video last night, I thought it was funny, and he explained it just like that. He said, here's the thing, he's like, sometimes I do carry my Glock 17. He's like, sometimes I'm an old man, sometimes I need a Glock 17. He's like, the thing is, I carry extra magazines because I'm gonna shoot it a lot. And I don't mean shooting it at the range a lot. I mean, if I have to shoot someone, I'm gonna shoot them a lot until they stop. Whereas, so a bigger bore, you don't have to shoot as much. So, as the myth of capacity guys, it takes one to six rounds of what your standard average everyday civilian base to base, base to face firefight is into. This holds just the right amount of ammunition. A revolver holds just the right amount of ammunition. You don't need to be a tactical ninja to survive in the world. Now, the other reason people just don't like 1911s is reliability issues. They say reliability issues. Well, first things first, all 1911s, modern day 1911s, are built very, very tight. Very, very tight because they want the most accurate pistol in the world. So they put, the bar, they put it as tight as they possibly can so there's no shaking and all the other stuff. So you have to have about a 500 to 1,000 round breaking period. It is what it is. You got to have it. You have to machine the gun and, and order so it fits the gun just properly. Most of the, the issues I've seen with 1911 take place within that 500 round period, 500 to 1,000 round period. After that, it's very few and far between if you know how to take care of it. The biggest issues that people have with 1911s is the magazines. A lot of people say, oh, you're one of these magazine guys. No, I'm serious, it's a magazine thing. They carry magazines like this, like this camera magazine. You see this follower right here? These followers, the, the problem with these magazines is these ones are like this, look at that. You can just look, just pushing this around. This follower moves, all right? Basically what happens is when you put this in here, it has a tendency to pull it forward like this and see how it got tied up right there? It got tied up right there. And the other thing that they have a tendency, right now it has to be lined up just right, but they do have a tendency to pull forward and it gets tied up. The other issue that ones like this have is when they're going down there, when those are pushing the round into the chamber, the rounds have a tendency to get pushed downward on this. The rounds have a tendency to lean forward and push forward on these specific magazines. Now what you get in there, when you get into that ramp right there, if you have a magazine like this, like the Kimber magazine or the ones with the external lips like this, what happens is they gouge into it. They gouge into that feed ramp. They gouge into it and they could scuff it up and dent it up and it makes it harder for different guns or rounds to actually get in there. The trick to getting good 1911 magazines is looking for these ones right here. Like Wilson Combat with these polymer followers are awesome. They have strong springs. They don't have a tendency to lean forward like this. I can't, can't really move it forward compared to that way. Whereas this one's boom. Just comes down very easily and gets stuck right there and they have to shove the springs back so you need good magazines like wilson combat they make great magazines for 1911s and the ones with the polymer followers they're the best ones to use because it will always feed the, the gun properly the guns won't fall forward and it won't be gouging the feed ramp so if you're going don't you know <laughs> 1911 don't get these get these okay so that's the other thing now the last and final reason that people don't like 1911s is that they take, require a little bit more oiling and maintenance and they don't want that. They're used to Glocks or MPs or 320s or guns or you could just shoot and shoot and shoot a thousand rounds through it without having to oil it and it'll still keep going. Yes, a 1911 you have to oil a little bit more and it's not that complicated to actually oil a 1911. You now I'm actually going to demonstrate it right here on the camera. Once again, it's clear. Oiling it isn't that complicated, guys. Like I said, I keep this stuff in my range bag on a daily basis. It's just called CLP. You know, I use CLP when I was in the Marine Corps, and this is what I use now. It comes with this little straw. Now, oiling a 1911 is not complicated, but it's not like a striker. You have to freaking oil it on a daily basis. You see, there's the wear up there. You can see the, also the wear is up over there. So what you do is first I always keep it, keep it forward like that. Take a little bit of oil. I actually put it towards the back on this side of it. Put it right there. It seems where it gets more wear. 
I kind of watched, I'll show you. I put a little bit of oil right there and loop it around. Just wipe off a little bit of excess. You don't need a ton. There you go. I wipe that one. Lock it back to the rear. Right up here. This is where the uh, bushing is actually on the barrel. Still a little bit of oil on there if you see it. Oil a little bit there. Squeeze it just right. There we go. Nice. Just wrap it around there, no big deal. So you don't want too much. You just need a little bit on those areas that it wears right right before all the excess. Um, and when it's locked back, what you can do is you can actually look down there. You see this little tab right down there, that tab. Just put just a little bit on that, just a little drop. So let it soak in a little bit. And then you can actually see the slide a little bit. So I just take it with the slide. Got a little bit in there. Then I do the other side. That's all I do. Then, what I do, once again, just wipe out some of the excess. That's all you gotta do. Then, send it forward, okay? Then if you take a look right back here, I'm not getting oil all over it, but that's part of the 1911. Look back down here inside the hammer, like right down in here. Just put a little, just a tiny bit, you don't need much. It's a little bit tiny, tiny bit. Let it get down there, let it, I blow it down there, it's weird. Wipe a little bit of excess off the hammer. Drop the hammer underneath, down in that area. Just put a little bit in there. That's all it takes. And now you officially have a oiled up, lubed, and functioning 1911. It's not that complicated, it just takes that process. You do that and it will work. It'll function every single time. Now after you do that, it might be a little bit of excess. Just wipe a little excess off, no big deal. That's how you use 1911. Now, after every 500 rounds or so, after you shoot 500 rounds for it, you don't necessarily need to clean it. I recommend it. Every time I shoot, I usually clean it. But after about 500 rounds, yeah, you just gotta oil it again. That's all. You just gotta keep oiling it and just keep constantly oiling it to make sure it functions properly. And people don't want that. They're lazy. They want a gun that they, they don't have. They rarely have to clean and they don't have to oil and they don't have to shoot and all this other stuff. Guys, you know, clean your guns. And, you know, yes, maintenance is required. It's like an AR-15, you have to keep it oiled. When you're overseas, you have to keep it brushed off and oiled overseas compared to an AK-47. AK-47 will last longer without maintenance. You still gotta maintain it and oil it. But an AR-15, yes, it takes a lot more maintenance. You have to brush it off, you have to oil it. And all these people, they complain about, you know, I'll say like a 1911, you gotta put the maintenance into it. But then their favorite long gun is AR-15. It's like the same type of deal with that. You gotta oil a bolt carrier group all the time. You know, <laughs> there's nothing complicated about it, guys. But, but those right there are the main reasons why people don't like 1911s. So all the people that are new to 1911s out there, if you're wondering how to run them specifically or run how, to, how to run them, right there, that's all you gotta do. Just those steps is what you have to do to run them. You always, always, always keep your thumb, you ride your thumb on the safety. Just the pistol's designed that way. You always ride your thumb on the safety. You carry it locked and cocked, you oil it. All right, yeah, just like I showed you, you oil it. And just get muscle memory of constant practice and up, boom, boom, boom. Constant practice will make you will help you master the 1911. For all the people out there that are talking trash about the 1911 and say it's a horrible system that shouldn't be run and all that other stuff, guys, it's a great system. That's why this FBI uh, SRT team still carries it. Yes, 1911 is a very good system. If you maintain it, if you carry it the proper way, if you hold it the proper way, it will flawlessly work. If you use the right magazines, yeah, yeah that's a big deal. Use the right magazine, it will absolutely work. And, gotta break it in. Simple as that. Every gun I get, I don't care what type of gun it is, striker fire, whatever it is, I break them in. I put a minimum of 300 rounds before it, in it before I take it out. 1911, about 300, I think I put right around 400 rounds through it, and every single night I was sitting there racking it nonstop to the point where, guess what? I can just do that now. Now it's loose enough and it shoots. Last time I shot, it was cycling flawlessly, absolutely flawlessly. Anyway guys, I hope that helps the people out there, the new 1911 owners or people that are thinking about getting a 1911. It's a good system to run, you just gotta learn how to use it. That's all it is. Anyway guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me. And remember, it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.